So let's suppose that a vertical spring with a stiffness constant of 400 newtons per meter oscillates with an amplitude of 30 centimeters when a mass of 0.4 kilograms hangs from that spring. Now, if the mass passes through the equilibrium point with a positive velocity at time equals zero seconds, let's calculate in part A, or let's find in part A, the equation that describes the motion of the object, the position of the object with respect to time, and in part B, at what time would the spring be longest and shortest. So, we are assuming that the object is in SHM, or simple harmonic motion. So, let's begin by looking at our diagram of the mass that is oscillating via the spring. So, we know at time equals zero, our mass passes our equilibrium position. So, at time equals zero, our displacement along the y-axis is zero meters. So that implies that the force acting on the object at this point is zero, so that means the velocity is maximum. So at this point, our velocity is maximum. Now notice we're also told that the velocity points in the positive direction, so that implies that going downward is positive and going upward along the y-axis is negative. So that means our displacement going down is positive, and our displacement going up is negative. Now, recall that the period of our oscillation is the total number of seconds that it takes our object to complete one full oscillation, one full cycle. So we can break down the period into four different sections. So going from this position to our positive amplitude, then going back to this position, then going to our negative amplitude, and finally going back to this position. So we break down our period into four different steps. So let's actually try to plot our equation on the x-y axis. So the y-axis is our seconds, and or the x-axis is our seconds, and the y-axis is our displacement. Now, we know our object begins at time equals zero at a position of zero, so that means we begin drawing our curve from the origin. Now, we also know that when our object begins to travel past this point, the object is traveling in the positive direction, so it's displacing in the positive direction. So that implies we draw from this origin upward. Now notice at our period divided by 4, our object reaches a maximum displacement of A, which is equivalent to 0.3 meters. So that means at t divided by 4, at this point where t is our period, our object reaches a maximum value, maximum displacement of 0.3 meters. Now, after one more uh, t divided by 2 passes, or after one more t divided by 4 passes, our object returns back to our equilibrium point. So that means t divided by 4 plus t divided by 4 gives us t divided by 2, the object returns to its displacement of 0. And then it begins traveling in the negative displacement. So that means after one more t divided by 4, which gives us 3t divided by 4, where once again t is our period, the object reaches a negative maximum displacement, so a negative amplitude of negative 0.3 meters. And finally, when we add one more t divided by 4 to get our t, the full period, the full cycle, our object returns to its initial position. And so the graph of our equation that we're trying to find looks something like this. So actually, it looks like a sine function. A sine function that is being multiplied by 0.3. So we're essentially looking for this equation. Our position, x with respect to t, is equal to a multiplied by sine multiplied uh, sine of the inside. So what exactly is a? Where a is simply our amplitude, the maximum displacement. Now notice our sine function begins at the origin, so that means our phase angle is zero. 
So we have the following equation. So all that remains is to solve for our angular frequency. Recall the equation that gives us, that relates angular frequency with our k and m, where k is our stiffness uh, constant and m is our mass. So we take the ratio of k divided by m and that equals the square of our angular frequency. Now, we can solve for our angular frequency and we find that angular frequency is equal to the square root of k divided by m. So we know what k is, it's 400 newtons per meter and we know what m is, it's 0.4 meters. So we get 1000 uh, to the one half power and that's about 31.6 radians per second. So that means we can substitute this quantity into this omega and we get the following result. So that means the equation that describes the motion, our displacement of the object with respect to time is given by this equation. x of t is equal to 0 0.3 sine 31.6t, where t is given in seconds. Now, what about in part b? At what time will the spring be longest and shortest? So to answer this question, we have to go back to our diagram. Notice we're looking for the maximum positive amplitude and the maximum negative amplitude. So we're essentially looking for these two points. So we want to find the time intervals that correspond to these two points. So notice that this point corresponds to t divided by 4, where t is the period, and this point corresponds to 3t divided by 4. So that means if we find what the period of our oscillation is, we can solve for the time. So let's do that. So recall that the relationship between our omega, the angular frequency, and the frequency is given by this equation. The angular frequency is equal to 2 pi our frequency. Now, frequency is related to period by the equation frequency is equal to 1 divided by period. So that means we can replace our frequency with period and we get the following result. Now we rearrange and solve for t and we find that our t, our period, is equal to 2 pi divided by angular frequency. Now we know what angular frequency is, it's this quantity. So 2 pi divided by this quantity gives us about 0 0.2 seconds. So our period is 0 0.2 seconds. Finally, to find our time intervals for these two amplitudes, we simply have to find t divided by 4 and 3t divided by 4. So t divided by 4 is 0 0.2 divided by 4, so 0 0.05 seconds. And 3t divided by 4 is 3 times 0 0.2 divided by 4, which is 0 0.15 seconds. So at these two time intervals, our spring is the longest and shortest. Now we can check by using this equation. So if we plug in these two quantities into these, this equation, for this quantity, we should get positive 0.3 meters, and for this quantity, we should get negative 0.3 meters. In fact, if we, if we plug those values in, that's exactly what we get. X of 0.05 seconds gives us 0.3 meters this point. And x of 0.15 seconds gives us negative 0.3 meters, so this point. So this works, and that means at the times of 0.05 seconds and 0.15 seconds, our spring is longest and shortest, so it's stretched and compressed.